Hey crocheters! Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back, okay? Today we're gonna be doing something that I've done before, okay? We're gonna be reviewing a pattern. We're gonna be reviewing a pattern. We are going to be making a fairy dress, okay? This pattern here. Um, I mentioned it in my fairy core crochet idea video and I also teased that I might be doing a pattern review for it and immediately after that video I ordered the yarn that I need. So as always with these pattern reviews I'm gonna be timing how long it takes me to make the item. We're gonna be going over supplies, see if there's anything missing or anything like that. Um, and we're gonna be going over how much yarn it takes because sometimes patterns don't tell you how much yarn it takes or it's not very accurate so i'm going to be telling you i'm going to be telling you how many skeins it takes me to do um so let's go ahead and jump right into the pattern this is a paid pattern it's on etsy so i bought it i downloaded it i will not be showing you the pattern for obvious reasons if you want to make this go by the pattern but this is just a video to kind of go over the process and i can kind of give you like a is it beginner friendly is it not you know were there issues i had with it kind of thing it looks like for materials it says to it said actually tells you this is a good pattern it actually tells you how many skeins you're gonna need based off the size that you're gonna make so that's cool it also tells you what brand they use now I looked up this brand in like this yarn brand and I couldn't find them um, not for a price I was willing to pay. So it does say that it's cotton fingering weight yarn. And personally, I, um, don't, I didn't have any fingering weight yarn. And I, so basically I'm not using fingering weight yarn. I'm using weight three, like light weight three yarn, which is similar to fingering weight. It's not exactly fingering weight. Finger, fingering weight yarn is like super, super thin, but I didn't want to use fingering weight. I hate working with it. Um, so, and this is more affordable. I got True Boo, okay, in, what color is this? In sable, sable color. So it's like a brownish, plumish color. I don't know if you can, it's kind of like brown -y. but I got, I purchased, six skeins so that I have a fear of running out. I probably won't use all this, but I didn't want to run out in the middle of the project. So I got six skeins of this Cherbu yarn um, and it looks like it's going to take three different hooks and I have those hooks. So, so it does have a sizing section. Love when a pattern has a sizing section. Notes on sizing. Pattern is written for a size small. Medium and large instructions are in the parentheses. Okay, so it goes small, medium, and large. That's the sizing that they have. And it has measurements for your bust. Pattern also includes notes on how to adjust the size of the dress, smaller or larger. The pattern of the bodice and skirt are based on a repeat and thus can be adjusted smaller outlined instructions okay so i'm gonna actually measure myself and just figure out what size i am really quickly if you don't have a fabric measuring like a thing with fabric these if you don't have one of these fabric measure should get one especially if you're crocheting clothes because there are patterns like this that want your bust measurement so you need to measure it usually you want to have someone else do this but i'm too lazy so um damn all right so now i figured out what size to do pattern okay so based off my bust which is my boobs that's how they're measuring it so it's just because i think that's probably where the patterns start and it looks like i'm right between okay i am a large in the bust size measurement i'm curious how that's going to translate to the rest but i mean if that's how you wanted to do your sizing that's cool all right so it looks like we go right into the pattern Uh oh it doesn't say what size hook to use it literally goes right into the pattern creating the cup there's a picture oh okay this is an issue <sighs> So it says under materials, it has three different size hooks. But when you go into making it, it doesn't tell you what size hook you're using. Okay, um, that's already going to be docked a point for pattern because I kind of need to know which of the three hooks I'm using. So it literally just goes right into the row. Um, and then beginning the bodice, there's no, doesn't say what hook to use, doesn't say what hook to use, mm, doesn't say. I'm going through the whole pattern just to make sure it's not. Okay, so final trim blah 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 okay so at the mesh for the stomach of the dress it says switch to an e-hook for this part okay so we know there's an e-hook for that part beginning the skirt 
choosing a skirt length. And then this one says switch to F. Okay, that's all we get. So it looks like there's a D and an F section, which I'm assuming, oh, I'm sorry. Switch to E for this part, switch to F for that part. All right, I guess. Okay, so if two sections are E and F and there's three hooks in the material, I'm assuming you start with the D hook. Now, I am gonna dock though, because you should have put to the pattern creator, they should have put um, use D hook for this section. I'm just using context clues and I'm gonna use the D hook because the two later sections say use an E hook and then the next section says use an F hook. This is the only section unlabeled and there's three hooks listed in the material so I'm assuming D but again this is just something when you have more than one hook you're working with you need to be very clear on which hook you're using at which section of your pattern so that kind of sucks but we're just gonna assume D um I need to make sure I have all these hooks I'm pretty sure I do but let me just double check and make sure I have all these hooks also I like to highlight once I measure myself I like to highlight the size I'm gonna be making so I don't forget so I'll go through the whole pattern and highlight the highlight or like circle the parenthesis number that's mine that I'm gonna be using so it doesn't get confusing. So I'm downstairs, a little bit of a chain of scenery, change in scenery, but we are 40 minutes in. I've been using my stopwatch for 40 minutes in and I've completed the first part of this pattern, which is the, <laughs> I've completed the first part of this pattern, which is the cup, which I got one cup down. We are doing a size large, but I just have to make one more of these. So it looks like 40 minutes per cup but I did have some notes so far on the pattern just in this section alone. So I wanted to say between the row one and row two of this section, they didn't state anywhere to turn your work. So as I was going, I started to go in a full circle and I just kept going and I stopped myself and I was like, this is making a weird shape. So I went back to the pattern and I realized it didn't say turn, but then when I looked at the one picture, of a finished cup. That's the only picture you have for this section. When I looked at that picture, I realized it was doing more of a rainbow back and forth shape. So I assumed I needed to turn my work, but in order for this to be beginner friendly, I would suggest that it say to turn your work. Um, I don't think this is something that you would have realized if you've never made anything before. I do think that they should add that there. Another thing I wanna talk about is in the second half of this section, for each row, although you are repeating yourself in each row they have no stitch count in the parentheses um most patterns at the end of a round well in parentheses will say this many stitches so you have an idea of how many stitches for each row you're going to have so as you go you can count and make sure you're making enough for this one it was more vague it was very like it was really stitch until the end of the row or stitch until you hit this part it didn't say how many and i find that annoying especially if you're a beginner having those stitch numbers, even if you're a crocheter who ignores them, it's really nice to have because if at some point it starts to get uneven, you can have those numbers to fall back on and know if you're making too many or too little. And the final note I wanted to say for this specific cup section is that the cup sizes are um, very easy to size up. So if you are a size larger than a large, although this pattern only lists the numbers for small, medium, and large, if you are larger than a large, it is easy to customize the cup section because each row, I'm sorry, not each row. For this section, adding one row is going up a size. So she has a select number of rows for small and then she adds one row and it's a medium, adds one row and it's a large. So you can easily add a row until you hold it up to yourself and it fits. So, so far this section, um, although the numbers aren't listed, it can be size inclusive or like easily adjusted if you're not any of the three sizes that she offers. So um, now that we've gone over that, I'm gonna make the other cup size and then we'll do a, I'll check in with you at that point and we'll continue on to the rest of the pattern. Okay, we're at an hour and a half and we've got both of the cup sizes done. Um, I don't have any more notes on that part. It was just really repeating itself. And now I'm gonna start beginning the bodice section and working along the bottom of the cups. And I'll let you guys know if there's any issues with that. Okay, we are two hours and 40 minutes in. So we've got the cups made and we've got the body. I guess it's called the bodice, starting the bodice, but we've got that part made. It's all connected. It's about like two strands of double crochets. So connecting the pieces and doing that part, we are at two hours and 40 minutes. I do have some notes for the pattern. Um, when it comes to making, starting this section, you have to do this thing called um, foundation 
lifts double crochet, which got me thinking. I realized when I was going through the pattern in the beginning, I didn't make any note to the fact that there was no stitch index on the pattern. There was no section of the pattern that said, these are the stitches. There was no part of the pattern that had a list of the stitches that are in the pattern. So I didn't catch it in the beginning, so I'm catching it now. So they should have had that because I would have seen that there is a foundationless double chain or double crochet and I would have looked it up because I've actually never done one before. So since it wasn't in the beginning, I had to look it up in the middle of the round. That was kind of annoying. But other than that, I got through that part. And then when it came to the part of making the section that goes around your body underneath the cups, um, I actually really like this part. It's size inclusive. So it has the numbers for small, medium, and large. But then it says if you need to go bigger, just work... Um, in sections of eight so if you're gonna add more add eight if you're gonna subtract subtract eight that way everything adds up later in the pattern so I really liked that because sometimes patterns will just give you a small medium a large and then if you're bigger or you're smaller they're like yep figure it out so this was kind of cool she gave you the math breakdown so you know how to add more um, the one thing that I wish she also had added into her pattern is if you're adding eight to sixteen or more in this section you have to add eight to sixteen in the remainder of the body section. She didn't put that here, and I learned that when I started the, re the rest of the section and realized, oh wait, this is not adding up. So if you are doing that section and you are gonna add or subtract, you have to add or subtract from the next body section in order for it to all add up. So keep that in mind. Also, when attaching the two ends of your, not really strap, but like the thing that go around the bottom of the cup, when you're attaching those two ends, there's like a one sentence on how to attach it. And it is so confusing. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm pretty sure I did it incorrectly. And her pictures to help is one picture and it doesn't help. So, um, and I have no advice for you on that because I basically just winged it and I didn't didn't do what she said because it didn't make any sense and it wasn't adding up so I just kind of slip stitched everything together but um I would some notes for that is just add more pictures on that because it's very confusing so so far I wouldn't deem this pattern beginner friendly um because even as an advanced crocheter it's been taking me way more time than usual to kind of decipher the pattern and figure it out and do math and things like that so as of right now it's not beginner friendly but other than that I'm just gonna keep going and we'll see how long it takes. I am estimating that's gonna take a long time because we're already at almost three hours and this is literally all I have to show for it and it's a whole dress so it's probably gonna be I'd say 12 or more hours to do this but I'm gonna keep going on the body part and I'll check in with you guys later. We are three hours. <laughs> I'm laughing because you're right there. <laughs> uh, we are three hours and 40 minutes in. <sighs> this one is a big project you guys we're not even we're about to be four hours in and i feel like i've done nothing but we've got the cups done and we've got this first part of the body done i actually really really like the detail on this um there's like a front post double crochet it's late i'm tired y'all but it's like a front post double crochet so it's kind of cool I like, I just really like the detail on this one. So since this was the end of that section and we fastened off and now she's having us reattach the yarn up here and kind of do the trim on the um, bra cups. That's what I'm gonna go into now. But yeah, we are at three hours and 40 minutes. We've got this much done. Um, no issues with this section. Um, this, you know, these couple rows I've just done. The only thing I'd say is keep in mind if you did extend your stitching earlier, like in the part where she says to, because all of those numbers will not apply to you. You need to do your own math and add and subtract and divide and all that stuff from what you added um, to make it make sense. So other than that, I'm gonna keep going. I'll see how far we can get tonight before I go to bed, but yeah. <laughs> your eyes straight rolled in the back of your head. What? <laughs> like, oh, they're talking to me. Um, okay, we're at four hours in, proof, four hours in, and I just completed the trim of the bra pad area, which I actually didn't even notice in the pattern that this section was crocheted. Um, I thought the bra pad was done, but no. So it's actually really cute. 
I really enjoyed this part. It was satisfying. And it looks really cute. Uh, the only thing is, on this section right here... Oh, it's not going to focus, is it? On this cluster section I'm pointing to... I did it and redid it three times before I realized what the pattern meant. So, and I was going to say maybe I'm just not, like... Maybe I don't have enough experience to understand, but I'm actually thinking it's more the way the pattern was written. I just think that this pattern can use a lot more detail than it actually is using right now. We get like one sentence and one picture of it like completed, and then we're supposed to figure it out, which is kind of annoying. So it's still definitely not beginner friendly. Um, and yeah, even as an advanced crocheter, I'm like struggling in some parts, but I did end up figuring it out. I can't with certainty say that I did it correctly, but it looks like the picture. So, but yeah, it's late. I'm going to bed and I'm going to continue this dress tomorrow. And hopefully we can finish it tomorrow because I don't really want to be working on this for multiple days, but we shall see. Good night. We are at four hours and four hours and 45 minutes. I'm definitely cutting my bangs. Um, they're way too long. Anyways. This pattern just kept, keeps getting like more disappointing every time I do a section. So last night we finished like the bra section, the trim, all of that. Um, I It's the next day. I just finished, let me show you. I just finished this, which I'm also going to like weave in all of these ends because there are so many ends, so much fastening off and reattaching in this pattern. It's insane. I feel like there's a better way to do it to where there isn't much... Um, reattaching and fastening off, but whatever. Oh, wait, this is inside out. I almost had a heart attack. It's like I did it wrong. Okay, so the section that I just did right now is for this back piece. Alright, so here's like the back. It's for these squares, which as you can tell, I literally had to attach and reattach each square. But these squares kind of line the space between your shoulder blades on the back of the dress. Now, during this section, there is two issues I have with this section. For one, um, when making this magic circle, she left out the fact that you needed to slip stitch to close the circle. She just went right into the second round and she didn't explain that in order to do that, you have to slip stitch. So, missing information. The other thing is, there's a portion where you're making the square and then she says attach to the left stitch marker. So like you stitched mark these two spots and she said the left one. So I would assume it would be if I'm looking at also no pictures. I would assume if I'm looking at the back of it, my left would be here. So I attached it here, but then it was backwards. So I was like, okay, so is it left like this or is it left when the garment is upside down because if the garment's upside down and this is left you know what i mean so i had to flip the garment upside down and connect it on the right so it was like i had to flip it upside down and opposite of what she said basically the instructions were incorrect and honestly it would have been better if she had a picture showing how to lay the garment out and then circling like this is where you're going to do it first or even just saying like lay it like this and then do left or right because she doesn't tell you how to lay your garment so your left is going to be different everyone's going to be different depending on how it's laying so that part was annoying but so far i've tried this part on it fits good the measurements and everything are adding up so i'm happy with that i just wish that i didn't have to do a lot of guessing because there's just so much instruction missing and there's bad overall direction so not looking so good so far with the pattern review but um, I am figuring it out another annoying thing about this pattern is the way it's lined up if you add any stitches to make it fit under your like bust better your seam is going to be off-centered because you make this portion first and you go all the way around and then you get to here and then they're like if you need more add more and then you add more and then your seam is off-centered so that's annoying um, I wish she kind of would have worked it out better, but it's fine. So, so far, we are at 4 hours and 45 minutes, and I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the, um, next section. Alright, you guys. We are at 5 hours and 40 minutes. <sighs> I did the straps. Um, the straps are done. Actually, let me, like, give you a little bit of a better... We've got, like, the bras done, the straps are on, 
the back is kind of made I have complaint um specifically in the strap area it's unclear like okay I know because I've been crocheting for so long how I need to chain every time I turn to do each row for the straps but it's just not detailed so like unless you've been crocheting for a long time and you can just kind of wing it in parts you're gonna be confused like it's so annoying for such a detailed piece you'd think that the person would put more time into this pattern and put more detail into it but it just feels really rushed there's just so many missing parts it's like i don't know i don't know if she just thought like oh it's common sense like i don't care like it's a pattern you should have every section laid out whatever um so i'm on the final like trimming for the top part this trimming on the edge i'm doing that final part right now and then it looks like we're gonna move into the body of the dress so like the whole torso area and stuff like that um we are literally almost at six hours of crocheting and this is all i have so it's a very detailed piece definitely not beginner friendly i would say it's intermediate i i would consider myself an advanced crocheter and because of how shitty this pattern is like no offense to the pattern maker but like stop being lazy like this is the laziest pattern i've ever seen um and i'm just i think i'm upset because i it's a paid pattern like if this was a lazy free pattern that's one thing but i paid money and it's on it's on like a higher tier when it comes to how much patterns are worth or how much they're sold for these are this is one of the more expensive ones so i'm kind of just annoyed so we'll see if things get better or worse but every single time i start a section of this damn dress there's a piece missing or the lefts and the rights don't line up or the numbers aren't lining up and it's not on me i'm like following the pattern and that's what's happening so it's just annoying it's just annoying okay that's all so we're gonna do the final trimming and move into the body part of it and i will check back in later i also want to mention we are still on our first skein of yarn we haven't finished the first one i bought six and we haven't even finished the first one and I've got a bulk of the top done so I probably won't use all six but the pattern said for the size I'm doing I should have five so I bought six just in case um we'll see if I actually use five and see if that's accurate or it's not accurate too another thing is this entire pattern is so it is like covered in attach here fasten off reattach fasten off reattach fasten off and it's so annoying because good like really good detailed patterns usually find a way so that find a way to make it to where you're not constantly fastening off and reattaching a bunch over and over again they write the pattern in a way where it's less often i swear i feel like i'm doing it every row like it's the most annoying thing but whatever just wanted to give a little update we have hit the seven hour mark and I'm working on the mesh part of the dress, like the torso part. Now there is a cool thing that's not advertised in the pattern, but you get to pick between looser mesh and tighter mesh, so that's kind of cool. I chose the um, looser mesh because I want to be able to layer with it, but so far this is my favorite part to crochet because there's not a lot of fastening off and reattaching. Um, it's just like continuous rounds over and over of this stitch so that's cool but i wanted to check in with you because of time so it's seven hours in and i've moved on to the second skein so so far we've only used one full skein um i'm curious if we'll even get near using everything that i bought but there's still a lot of the dress left i only have like this top portion and a little bit of the torso part so we shall see how it ends up we are officially eight hours Eight hours into this project i just finished like the mesh torso part and we are choosing a skirt length so the way the pattern is laid out it basically says choose how long you want the dress basically um you can have just above the knee just below the knee and calf length and i don't know how long i want it to be because i do want some like length on this dress I just don't know if I want it to be below the knee or calf. I feel like, like calf is a lot. I feel like below the knee is fine. It's like mid-length. Okay, I think I'm going to do the mid-length. I don't think I need to do the longest one. So basically, there's just the, um, the skirt length left, which I'm going to do right now. And then the pineapple stitches. And then we are done. We are done. 
So, since we're at eight hours now, also it's like really late at night and I'm in my living room, so I'm trying to be quiet. But we're at eight hours now, so I'm like predicting we're probably gonna do four more hours, so I'd say it's gonna be like a 12 hour project, I'm predicting. But we're gonna do the length of like this, it's called the skirt length, um, which it looks to be about five rows. So I'm gonna do that. I don't know, I kinda want it to be, should we do the longest one? Ah, let's do the longest one. I changed my mind. I think it'll be more fun, kind of like twirling around, like Stevie Nicks style. You know, we need a long dress. So we're gonna do the longest option. That way you guys can get an idea of how long it takes to pick the longest option too. So I'm gonna start that section and then we only have one section left. Also, we are still on the second skein. So I'm curious if we're even gonna hit five skeins like she said, so we'll see. I um, got back to crocheting and then I remembered that the section that I just finished doing, that I told you that I just finished doing, um, there is a really detailed paragraph with like an equation on how to calculate how many, you know, double crochets you end up with based on how many you may have added earlier in the pattern. So I'm just saying it is very size inclusive. So if you need more area around like your stomach and stuff, she makes it very, very easy to calculate that with like in a bunch of equations and math and stuff. You just plug in the numbers you use and it figures it all out. So I just wanted to add that because, because I know from a previous video I did on size inclusive patterns that it's really hard to come by patterns that are easily adaptable. Um, and although this one only lists small, medium, large or whatever, she also lists how to, how to do larger than that or smaller than that based on just like what, however many you need to add or whatever. So I just wanted to let y'all know this one so far, it's pretty size inclusive. It is late in the night. I'm so tired. So are all the cats, look. She's sleeping. He's sleeping. She's sleeping. I'm watching The Walking Dead while I crochet. Um, but yeah, I just started working on the next section and I realized I didn't tell you guys about that really cool equation thing. So now you know. Am I crazy for thinking I can finish this before I go to bed? Probably. I think we're not going to finish it till tomorrow. I think I'll get this section done and then end up doing the pineapple stitch section tomorrow. So we'll see. We're at nine hours and 40-ish minutes and I completed that section that I was telling you guys about. Um, the mesh section and what's called the skirt section. I finished it and now we just have the pineapple stitches. It's like, also it looks so tiny, I know, but here's like the top part, okay? And then we've got the mesh done and then we've got the skirt part done. Ah! Got the top bra part, the mesh part, and the skirt part and now we just have to do the two pineapple parts but i'm gonna do that tomorrow because we are almost at the 10 hour mark of crocheting we're almost at the 10 hour mark of crocheting and i'm so tired i'm going to bed but also i have not tried this on and i'm just a tiny little bit concerned it's not gonna fit but at this point there's not much i can do about it because i'm already like 10 hours in and there's only one section left so if it's not gonna fit then it's just not gonna fit you know what i mean and i still have to block it and everything so it's gonna stretch out but <sighs> i just hope it fits <laughs> i didn't think about it i should have put it on and i didn't i'm gonna go to bed see y'all tomorrow we are at the 10 hour and 45 minute mark and we're on to our third skein i think three actually let me see we're on to our third skein at this point and I know I said that I'd be done by 12 hours, but I'm on round three of a 21 round section. So I have a feeling it's gonna take a longer time. Okay, I we are at 14 hours of crocheting. Um, we have about 10 rows left of the dress. I'm gonna show you. So we've got the top, we've got the midsection, and we've got the skirt started. I actually love this pattern like love the way it looks we've got 10 rows left this is our third skein of yarn so we're definitely going to be going into our fourth skein i don't know if we'll hit five i think um we might 
just use four, but we'll see. But I'm really excited for this. Oh, uh, I'm just like, oh, I love it. It's so cute. It's so detailed. I do want to note that in this last section that I'm working on this section, there was a typo. So there were two typos in this section of the pattern. So still not looking very good when it comes to pattern reviewing. Um, it's a lazy pattern with lack of detail. So, but... I will say this is the part that I've had less like the least amount of problems is this skirt section and that's the end of the dress so a lot of the problems are in the very beginning so if you can get through that then you can you can get if you can get to the mesh part into the skirt part then you're pretty good to go for the rest of it I'm pretty sure it's just repeating what I just did um, over again so yeah I'm really excited I am a little confused because it said the one I picked was the calf length one. If you guys remember last night, I said I was going to pick the longest version. And this, like, I held it up to me, and I think this is barely going to touch my knee. I don't know. It said it said to block, uh, it said to steam it to kind of loosen the fibers. So I will be steaming it to get the full effect and, like, follow the pattern. Um, so we'll see if steaming it helps. But if not, then this is going to be a very short dress and, like, nothing like the pictures or any of the pattern says. So... It's gonna be weird because I follow all the measurements so yeah but I'm gonna steam it and hopefully it gains some length so yeah but I will check in with you guys when I get this final section done and we'll do a whole little try on at the end hi people <laughs> it is almost 1 a.m. everybody's asleep so I'm gonna talk kind of quietly but I finished the dress I finished it okay here's kind of like it's done it's a lot smaller than the measurements say but the measurements also say that it's after steam blocking so which i haven't done yet so maybe it gets longer with steam blocking but it doesn't look very long so we'll see but um i finished crocheting it i'm gonna block it tomorrow but it is crocheted y'all um it took exactly 19 hours and 30 minutes to me and i made the longest version and i made the large and the longest like version um i think it's a calf length so i made it like the biggest the pattern has um and it took 19 hours and 30 minutes so almost 20 hours um we used she said it would take five skeins to make something this like in this size and I used four skeins four full skeins and then I dipped into the fifth skein but like barely like literally barely it's still almost a full skein so I would buy five skeins if you're gonna make a large um at the longest length I'd buy five skeins but um yeah I did want to also say that the last three rounds in this pattern are just like wrong like I don't know how to explain it but like I don't know how to explain it without literally like giving you the pattern but um if you're making this and you get to round 19 20 and 21 it's the last three rounds there are so many typos that it's not gonna make any sense like literally any sense but I did figure out that what she should have done is literally if you're making this just so you know if you're like frustrated for round 19 ignore it and just repeat round 10 and for round 20 just repeat round 11 okay that is exactly what I think that's what she was trying to write she should have just copy pasted it but she didn't um but she added like two parts in the rounds that just they don't add up and I know you're not gonna understand what I'm saying unless you're making it but if you're making it and you're on the last three rounds you know exactly what i'm talking about she says to do something in the fan stitch when there's no fan stitch from the previous row so she's obviously messed up so there's typos in round 19 and 20 just repeat round 10 and 11 you'll get what you're supposed to get and then for the last round ignore the part where she says fan stitch in the next fan she basically doubled what she said if that makes sense like she told you to put a fan stitch and then she tells you to put a fan stitch again in the next fan stitch but there's only one there's not two so just cross out the second part and then follow the rest of the round correctly and it'll all line up so yeah overall when it comes to the pattern i mean we're gonna steam it and then i'm gonna try it on and you get to see what it looks like super exciting hopefully it fits hopefully it fits but we shall see um as for the pattern 
honestly, I would give it like two out of five, maybe three. Eh. I'd say like three out of five. I'm being generous because it's a very complicated pattern. But I just feel like there was a lot of laziness in it, a lot of typos. I don't think anybody tested this pattern or even really reviewed it um, before uploading it on Etsy. So I don't think it's worth your money. If you want to spend your money, go for it. I got it when she was having a sale, so I didn't even pay full price. I think I paid like, I think it was like 25% off or something, but, um, and I still feel like it wasn't worth the money that I paid for it. There's just so, when you're buying a paid pattern, there shouldn't be this many typos and things that don't add up and just pure laziness, if I'm being honest. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend the pattern. I did end up with the dress. But this was with a lot of like figuring it out on my own and just years of experience with crocheting and just kind of like figuring things out when they didn't add up. But if you're not as like, if you're not as advanced in crocheting, this is just, it's a headache. It's more of a headache than it is fun. Also, I was going to look at the reviews for the pattern, like on her site. I didn't look at the reviews at all. And I was talking to my mom about this pattern and she was like, you should check the reviews and see what they say. And I was like, mm, you're right. So I'm going to look at the reviews and see if there's anybody else saying anybody else saying the same thing that i'm saying make sure i'm not crazy so i'm gonna look at the reviews also i'm gonna leave a review okay because i think she needs to know that the pattern sucks sorry but i am gonna check the reviews really quick just so that we can see if i'm crazy or not okay so i just scoured through their reviews their five star shop i went through the reviews for this specific pattern and there are only 34 okay the lowest review it has is three stars but then i started okay anyways let me just read you some of these so this three star one says i'm just starting and i had to restart the top as both breast pieces did not quite match so i'm trying to do the top differently so i can work same thing on both sides so i've attached a base for the waist and working my way up with two strands once i do each side but both are on the same row as i go up still not great but i don't give up easily so i'm moving on it's a wait and see and so far it's not great another three star i'd like to consider myself i'd like to consider myself an intermediate crochet but this pattern was a little difficult for me to follow particularly di the directions for making the large size i also wish there were more pictures or even a video to go along with it agree not to mention the many typos um and then what got me was i was like there are a lot of five stars which is weird considering how rough this pattern is like just in the format and how nobody looked for typos and nobody tested it obviously because they would have hopefully found these things but this i hate when people on etsy do this they five star something before they even use the pattern i don't get it like this one's a five star it says have not tried it yet but it looks really easy to follow girl how do you know it's easy to follow if you haven't tried it yet i hate that Another one, have not made this yet, but the pattern is very easy to follow. Mmm, you haven't made it. Your review doesn't count. Five stars, beautiful pattern, super easy to read. Still working on it, but can't wait to finish it. Stop reviewing patterns before you even make the item, okay? If you're a crocheter and you're watching this video and you're one of the people who review patterns before they ever make the item, you're not doing it right make the item first then review the pattern okay because then it gives patterns that suck a bunch of five star reviews and then people buy them and then they realize it's not a five star pattern okay i think i'm just upset <laughs> lovely can't wait to try the design then why did you five star it anyways i think i'm just upset because i spent almost 20 hours and i'm pretty sure like 25 percent of that time was just trying to figure out what the pattern maker was trying to say you guys who have been in this position before know exactly how I feel. So, you're with me on this. But, anyways, I'm calling it a night. Calling it a night. And then we're going to steam this bad boy. We're going to steam it so the fibers loosen and it gets longer. Because I want it to be a lot longer than it is. Um, but, again, I'm following the pattern. I didn't want to add extra rows because I wanted to show you guys what the pattern makes. So, we'll steam it tomorrow. Good night. It's done! It's done, you guys. Another, like, slip dress underneath it since it's see-through. I don't really want to be giving panties, so, but it's done. I steamed it. It's steamed. It's not as long as I want. I mean, it's like, it hits the length I want when I bend down, but 
I think it's cute. I don't know if you can see it. Really cute. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. With that being said, definitely steam it because before I steamed it, it was way too short. After I steamed it, it is like the perfect length. So definitely steam your dress. But other than that, that's the final product. Thank you for watching this pattern review. If you like this video or got anything out of it useful, subscribe, like the video, and comment down below if there's any other pattern that you're wanting me to review. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.